Let me speak directly to the millions of Republicans across the country who are tired of making excuses for Donald Trump's behavior at their churches, in their offices, and at their own kitchen tables. Enough is enough. The nightmare has to end, and it has to end now. It's time for us to purge Donald Trump from our system. Let's take the next four years as Republicans and build and heal a new party, a GOP 2.0, a party that finds leaders that are willing to embrace conservative principles and work across the aisle. So I'm not going to put you on the spot unless you're welcoming the invitation to be able to say who you think the VP pick should be for Kamala Harris. But I want to read a little bit of tea leaves because Andy Bashir, his name has been bandied about. We know that he's being vetted. He's heading to Atlanta tomorrow to a battleground seat of Georgia to campaign for Kamala Harris. But your thoughts about kind of this VP process that we're seeing that's happening right now? Every single person whose name we've heard will run circles around J.D. Vance. They are all exceedingly qualified. And as someone who's been through this process before, uh, it's, it's a very stressful process. So uh, God bless them all going through this. Um, but at the end of the day, we... Each of the people whose names we've heard mentioned have said whether they are the VP or not, they will support Kamala Harris in making sure that we defeat Donald Trump. And I really don't think that you can go wrong with any of the names who've been mentioned. I'm going to agree with you. I don't think it's diplomacy to say that it is an embarrassment of riches in terms of the veep stakes that's going on right now. I think any of them would be an amazing compliment to President Kamala Harris. Keisha Lance Bottoms, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining I really do believe that um, Trump has made two huge mistakes. Uh, clearly, he didn't really, he wasn't really looking at what was going on and probably had levels of arrogance that he was going to be up against President Biden, uh, whereas President Biden has outsmarted him quite clearly uh, in taking himself off the, well, off the ticket. Uh, so Trump appointed J.D. Vance. Now that is the equivalent, I suppose, of uh, sitting on a hand grenade and pulling the pin out. Just a disaster an absolute disaster. The best way of looking at it, look, there was clearly an assassination attempt on uh, the former president, which is just wrong. Always the ballot before the bullet. But the crazy thing about that is that headline, which was so significant, has almost gone to one side because now everybody's talking about the fact that um, Kamala Harris is here, ready to roll, literally. And the momentum behind her is incredible. Uh, Nobody's really interested in what Don Shitsy Pantsy, the old guy, has to say anymore. And the other thing is, he's always gone by saying something controversial to get headlines, etc. Never really put himself under any level of what I call proper scrutiny. Those interviews on CNN and anything like that, the town hall, load of rubbish. He made a mistake because if he said yes to the debate, he would get absolutely rinsed trounced doesn't have a clue so at the moment well he's a no he's a no-win situation i suppose the best way of describing it he just looks like a coward chicken running away from it i mean i thought he was the great person that could do everything and can't even take on a presidential debate maybe maybe somebody's going to get inside his ear and say this doesn't make you look too good definitely not a winner but hey Losing, losing, losing. Nothing new there. Really quickly, I have to say, Donald Trump is chickening out of a debate with Kamala Harris. I, I think that's a big tell that he's not willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a former prosecutor like Kamala. Your thoughts on why Donald Trump can't buck up and actually do what he promised he was going to do? Yeah, if I was Donald, I wouldn't want to see another prosecutor either, especially a black one, because every time it seems like a black prosecutor gets their hands on Donald Trump, it doesn't really go well for him. When you look at New York, whether you're looking at AG Letitia James and taking away his, abil his ability to operate businesses in the state of New York, or whether we're looking at Alvin Bragg and the fact that his freedom actually hangs in the balance because he's got these 34 felony convictions at the hands of Alvin Bragg, or we look, when we look down in Georgia, where he has been running a Away from finding Willis uh, and turning in every which way that he could because that grand jury was able to indict him and a number of his co-defendants have played guilty and he does not want to face the music there. So yeah, if I was him, yeah, I would be shaking in my boots as well. 
I think people expected it to get nasty now that there is a new head of that Democratic ticket. It's the vice president, Kamala Harris. You know, you've joked before that politics is way nastier than sports or the UFC. But what we're seeing, I mean, there's a labeling of the vice president as a DEI hire. Um, you yourself have prided yourself on giving both men and women opportunities at your organization. What do you think of this message that attacks the race and gender of an opponent? Yeah, I don't judge people by their politics and, and uh, you know, who they vote for or any of that stuff. And, and listen, I don't know Kamala. She seems like she's a nice person. Um, uh, you, you know, I, I have nothing against her whatsoever. And like I said, I'm not political. But do I think that, that she is fit for the job? I, I do not, personally. But it's not necessarily about the policy. It's the approach to attacking one. I mean, I know that you are very well-versed in what it's like to have a matchup and people are going to go at each other for the sake of the sport and entertainment. But when it comes to attacks, particularly, I mean, there was that quote from J.D. Vance, who is his running mate, talking about childless cat ladies. I mean, these are not things that are in line with enveloping perhaps women into the fold, which is the thing you have always stood for, you say, in your sport. Why, why shouldn't that be the same in politics? Yeah, well, listen, politics are, are, are the most disgusting, nasty. Um, it, it's, 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 a, it's atrocious what is said in, in politics. And, and the things that are being said on, on one side are being said on the other side, too, about Trump and about, uh, you know, his choice for vice president. It goes both ways. This isn't like, oh, my God, look what's being said about Kamala. It's, it goes both ways. They're both saying it. And like you said, it's already heated up and gotten nasty. And like you said earlier, it's only going to get nastier. That's politics. It, it is what it is. Um, and, and it definitely goes both ways. I don't know that it's going both ways to have the childless cat lady comment oh, or, come or a, a DEI oh, hire. Who's calling Jade? Is you think that Vice President Kamala Harris is calling JD Vance a DEI hire, Dana? Come on. But either way, she's going to say other nasty stuff about both of them. It, 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 it goes both ways. And as voters, as voters, what we need to do is cut through all the BS and you have to look at um, who do you think is best fit to run the country for the next four years? That is our job as voters. All of this stuff is a bunch of, of nasty BS, all of it. Who's best well fit to run the country? You as a voter, that's what you need to decide. Not, oh, my God, he said this, and oh, my God, she said that. There's going to be a lot of that over the next several months. I mean, I'm, through, and, and, I don't... and especially the media. Cut through well, all the BS that the media on both sides. You guys, hmm. you guys are really bad. Fox is bad. Everybody's bad. Cut through the BS and vote for who you think is the most fit to run the country. That's our job as voters. Well, look. I don't wear pearls. I don't pretend to clutch them and pretend that I'm shocked by every nasty insult that is waged against another person. But I think your point, though, about the American people wanting to know who's best for the country, this is the issue. When people are focusing not on policy positions, but personal attacks that have nothing to do with what voters want to hear about, that detracts from the experience of voters making a decision. And that's the problem. And I'm going to just know when you say you guys are terrible, you clearly don't mean Laura Coates. Well, for three years, we heard it every day that Joe Biden and Donald Trump were the oldest candidates ever. Republicans made the excuse that Biden was three years older and the media gave it a pass. Their breathless coverage of Biden's age while ignoring Trump's decline pretended Trump wasn't slurring his speech. We want a landslide that's confusing people. Including Obama. It was, I'll tell you what. Telling weird, wandering stories. By the way, a lot of shark attacks lately. The late, great Hannibal Lecter is a wonderful man. Now, there's no excuse. There's only one person in this race now with mental problems. One person with memory problems. One person feeling the icy hand of death from old age creeping closer. One person who knows the clock is running out. And that's old Donald Trump. Weak, impotent, forgetful, mentally declining, fast, He'd be 83 by the end of his term. If he's senile now, he'll be dangerous.